RF1, factoring polynomial expressions. In this section, we're going to go over factoring different types of polynomials. The first one is something that we would have done in Math 10C. First step is always look for a common factor. Always do this. It will simplify the question and make it easier for you. So in this case, our common factor here is 4. There's a 4 in each of these, and so we're going to divide that out. 4 and 4x squared divided by 4 is x squared. 8x divided by 4 is 2x. And negative 140 divided by 4 is negative 35. So we factored a 4, a common factor, out of all three of these terms, and now the remaining quadratic here is much easier to deal with. I'm going to go through how to factor this with decomposition. It's a common method. It's very robust because it works if it can be factored, and very common. There are many different approaches to factoring, so if you have a different one that you prefer, that's great. Use that. So if we're factoring with decomposition, remember we're just factoring this part, the 4 remains outside. It just stays there until the end. Okay, factoring by decomposition, we're going to make ourselves a little table here. We want to take the first and last terms and multiply them together. So negative 35 x squared. And we want to add to the middle term. And now we need to think of two terms that do this, that multiply to negative 35x squared and add to 2x. So don't be afraid to list them out, just we might have to look for a lot of different ones, but in this case, <clears throat> 7 and 5. How about a negative 7x and 5x? And that adds to negative 2, so that's not the one we want. But if we just switch that around, 7x and negative 5x, that adds to 2x. And so that's the one we want. So we're going to decompose the middle term. And that's where the name comes from, factoring by decomposition. We're going to decompose the middle term into these two terms, 7x and negative 5x. Put everything else the same, the negative 35, the x squared, and the 4. We've just broken the two, the middle term into these two terms here, and it still is equal. Now we want to factor out what's common between the first two here, and factor out what's common between the second two. So between the first two, there's an x that's common. We factor it out, and we're left with an x plus 7. Between the last two terms here, there's a negative 5 that's common. Always take this sign, whatever it is. Negative 5, and once we factor that out, we're left with an x plus 7. Now, last step, factor out the x plus 7. It's common here and here, so we can factor an x plus 7 out. Once that's gone, then all we're left with is x minus 5. Example 2, we want to factor this quadratic right here. Now when we look at this, our first step is always look for a common factor. But we don't have one in this case. So we're going to have to deal with this, as awful as it looks. So let's set up our factoring here. We want to multiply by the uh, first term times the last term. Now, just quickly, 6 times 28 is 168. So we need to multiply to 168 x squared. And we want to add to negative 29x. Whew. Now, this looks quite challenging. Oh, 
we don't usually deal with these kind of numbers. So let's break it down. What, did, what is multiplied to get 168? Well, 28 and 6, but if we add or subtract those, we're not going to get 29. So that's unfortunately not it. But if we look at the factors of this, we can actually tell what are the factors of 168. So the factors of 6 are 2 and 3. And the factors of 28 are 4, which breaks down to 2, and 2, and 7. So that's all the factors of 168. And really what we're doing is we're trying to make two groups. So we can make uh, a group like this and like this, but that's 6 and that's 28. I guess that's what we already had. So what if we made a group with these three and then those two? So that would be 2 times 3 is 6, times 2 is 12, and that would be 14. And if I add that up, oh, not getting to 29. So that's not it. But you can see how we're just grouping these in different ways. So it's actually, what if we group it like this? We take all the 2s together, and then we take the 7 and 3. And that is 8x and 21x. Now those add to 29. Hmm. So we just need to make a slight change here, make them both negative, and then we're good. And they still multiply to that. And they still add to that. So that's what we need to decompose our middle term into. So let's get on it. 6x squared minus 8x minus 21x plus 28. Next step, what's common between these first two terms and what's common between these last two terms? Common between the first two looks like 2x. Let's write what's left after we factor 2x from 6x squared, 3x. What's left from here? Negative 4. Close that. Remember, we always take this sign, so it's a negative. What's common between the, these two? Oh, it's a 7. Factor that negative 7 out from each of these, we're left with 3x minus 4. Then we factor the 3x minus 4 out because it's common. So 3x minus 4. And then our other binomial is what we have left, 2x minus 7. Example 3, we want to factor 50x squared minus 162y squared. You notice that now we have y's in here. No worries, we treat them the same. Now, first step, always look for something common. So if I looked at this, well, we've got a 2 here and a 2 here. So let's factor out a 2, see what we have left. 2, once we factor that out, we're just left with 25x squared minus 81y squared. Now these are actually special. Whenever we see uh, we don't have a middle term, but we do have a negative sign here, this term is a perfect square, this term is a perfect square, we call this a difference of perfect squares. And we can factor those really easily by taking the square root of the first term, which is 5x, and the square root of the last term, which is 9y. Write it twice and one will be plus, and the other minus. Example four, we have this mess. Negative two, x minus four, all squared, plus 13x minus four, and plus seven. Now, we notice that these two are similar, and we might, the first method here we're gonna do is, we're not gonna realize that these are the same. We're just gonna multiply this out. So negative two, x minus four times x minus four, plus 13, x minus 4, plus 7. We're going to distribute this out. So negative 2, x squared minus 4x minus another 4x. Negative 4 times negative 4 is 16. Then we're going to distribute in these coefficients into the brackets. So negative 2x squared plus 16x minus 32 plus 13x minus 
2 plus 7. Collect up like terms, negative 2x squared plus 29x minus 84 plus 7 minus 77. Whew. Now we want to factor this. I'll factor out this negative. I don't really like negative coefficient, leading coefficients, so I'll get rid of that. So negative and then 2x squared minus 29x plus 77. And then we've got negative. I'm just going to factor this, but you can use decomposition like we did before. This is a 2. This needs to be an x. 11, 7, they're both minus. All right, so now we factored this completely. Now, with a fancier pen, we're going to redo this question a different way. We're going to realize that, hey, these are the same. So I'm going to start off by saying, let A, or whatever your favorite letter of the alphabet is, let A equal x minus 4. We're going to sub out x minus 4, so it will look like this, negative 2, a squared plus 13a plus 7. You don't have to make this substitution. If you can just do this um, with the x minus 4 still in here, that's fine. Now I've got this thing here, and I want to factor this. First, I'll get rid of that negative, because I don't like that. Negative outside. 2a squared minus 13a minus 7. We want to factor this, so 2a and a 7 here and a 1 here and minus and plus. Okay, so we've got that factored. And our final step is just to drop the a out and put in the x minus 4 where it was. So 2 and then x minus 4 plus 1, x minus 4, oops, minus 7. So I'm taking the a out that I made up just to hold the spot for this x minus 4. And then clean this up. So distribute in the 2 here. So 2x minus 8 plus 1 and x minus 4, minus 7, minus 11. One more thing here, 2x minus 7, x minus 11. You can see that our answers are the same. Example 5, we want to factor this. Now this is quite difficult if we would try to multiply this out, uh, so don't do that. I'm going to keep using my fancy pen because we want to do this in a fancy, shorter way. So 49 is a perfect square. So red flags or alarm bells should be going off in your head. X plus 19 squared is also a perfect square because, hey, it's squared right there. Uh, so then uh, 9 is also a perfect square. The only thing that's not is, uh, well, what do we have here? Oh, it's a perfect square trinomial. So if I quickly factored that, I'd end up with y plus 1 all squared. Now we have the this whole first term is a perfect square. This whole second term is a perfect square. We're missing the middle term. This is a difference of perfect squares, even though we've got two variables and all of this stuff going on. How do we factor those? Well, first we look for a common factor. Uh, we don't have one. Then we'll just take the square root of the first term. Square root of 49 is 7. Square root of this squared is just this. Minus square root of this, square root of this. Close that. And then we do the same thing, but with a plus in between these two terms. And then it still looks uh, not that friendly, but you can multiply in the 7, multiply in the 3, and collect up like terms and see how it looks. We've got 7x plus 
minus 3y minus 3, 7x plus 133 plus 3y plus 3. Collect up some like terms here, 7x minus 3y plus 130, 7x plus 3y plus 136. RF1 is factoring polynomial expressions in these forms. And here is some questions for homework. Give it a try. Have some fun.